Good morning, my brothers and sisters. On this, the second episode of GMG TV since the forming of the GMGU. This, of course, is the Good Morning Guys podcast, and we are going to be talking about the second, the third, and the fourth episode of Mar- Marvel's, I almost said Mark's. <laughs> Wow, he's moving up in the world. Spoilers, Mark helped produce these three episodes. Uh, Marvel's She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Thank you so much for joining us on this fine morning, after an evening, or night. I am one of your hosts, the transition transponster, Lucas Ham Swisher. Mm-hmm. Also with me, I was waiting for, I was waiting for a response. I, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have no response. There. Let me just <laughs> pause here for myself as, You're I, in charge. <laughs> as I greet myself. Hello there. <laughs> with me also, the judge, the jury, and the executioner of everything about nothing, Patrick Novosel. I know a lot about nothing. I also know nothing about a lot of things. So Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. That's what I love I'm about a, you. I'm a, a cesspool of knowledge. Ooh, you're the Long John Silver's uh, library, if they had a library. Yeah, that's awful. <laughs> Why are these book pages covered in grease? <laughs> Chandler! <laughs> All right. That's what happens final... when you get a library card with, with my Long John Silver's library. Ooh, with know, your that's... hush puppy fingers. <laughs> like, oh, wait, let me find my card here. You get like crummies everywhere. Why is everything so greasy? <laughs> Uh, we're, we, you're on the do not, uh, check out list. Just so you know, yeah. cause you're, yeah, there's no rules figures. at my library either. That's right. Uh, our final member of the GMG quad Fecta, who should be here eventually. He's got, uh, that old Kevin Conroy voiced dark Knight in his heart. Mark Hamill's Joker laugh on his brain and Mulligatami Punxsutawney soup. Oh, Punxsutawney Phil soup. Punxsutawney Phil soup in his old stomach. Oh, Mark Bouger. <laughs> yeah. Sporting that, uh, what is that thing? It's not a woodchuck. It's not a badger. Groundhog. Groundhog? Got that <laughs> groundhog soup. I couldn't remember oh, what kind of... Woodchuck. I, I almost said beaver. I couldn't remember yeah. what kind of animal it was. I haven't never seen that wood, Woodchuck Day movie with Bill Murray, but I've seen yep. the Groundhog Day one. Yeah, yeah. It's a good call. All right. So we are talking about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episodes 2, 3, and 4. We're jumping right in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're jumping right into spoilers, people. So if you're used to the whole, like, here are our thoughts without, you know, any spoilers in our review, you're not getting that until the end. So stick around. <laughs> Is that around. an impression of us? <laughs> That's an impression of Mark, since he's not here. <laughs> he can't defend himself, so <laughs> neither will we. Okay. Uh, yeah, so episode two is called Superhuman Law. Jen Walters has revealed her identity to the world by punching out the newly introduced villain and social media mogul, Titania. And for her heroic, she loses her job, but then is offered a job at Goodman, Lieber, Kurtzberg, and Holloway, GLK and H for short, and accepts the next day dis- and discovers that she is heading up the Superhuman Law Division, expected to be the She-Hulk full-time on the job, 24-7, and her first case is none other than to represent Emil Blonsky abomination at his parole hearing, which she accepts only after getting the blessing from her cousin Bruce, who's flying away on a spaceship to who knows where, and then immediately finds out that Blonsky escaped prison, showing a scene from Chung, Shang-Chi. There you go. That is uh, your episode two <laughs> summary. I love it. I love it. What were your thoughts, your feelings, okay. your favorite parts, and the Easter eggs that you may or may not have missed in so, episode two? Two thing, two things. This, this show is, out there. is called She Hulk, and so with all the Marvel uh, series, you know, sometimes we're not seeing the the actual heroes on screen, and so the the way they intertwined her story that she has to be She Hulk for most of the show. Thank you, thank you, Marvel, for realizing that we want to see the heroes. We want to see yeah. the heroes. Whether she's no not, doubt, even even though she's not in, like she's not uh, a, even though she's at a know, computer typing most yeah, of the time. I, th- I still, I still think <laughs> talking it's, about it, law. It is so appropriate for the show. The show is really funny. I t- it's my kind of humor, uh, and so the, the way they did that was really, really good. Uh, but seriously, when Emil Blonsky came on screen, and I was like, what, are they talking about the Incredible Hulk? Are you serious that they're acknowledging the Incredible yeah. Hulk? You know, like, this is this was really, really cool reveal for me. I don't know if he was in any of the trailers or anything. I didn't watch any of them, uh, but it was a really cool reveal for me. 
to see that yeah. he uh he he was in there and how he's <laughs> has like pen pals and he's got uh he's re- reformed he can become abomination when he wants and he can you know not become you know just go back to spoilers um yeah I, I, these are two we're we're talking about two three and four so uh, <laughs> i know <laughs> i mean they're they're kind of running the two and three kind of run together a little bit right um, right so but but yeah i loved i loved that i really it kind of it kind of made me want to go back and rewatch the incredible hulk to realize because is what he is saying true like was he really you know coerced into becoming an abomination like i can't remember that i just remember he was uh, no, but he, it was really he, it's it's retconning like he was but he wasn't he was power hungry he wanted to be stronger faster he recognized that he was an old man so it was his way of kind of curtailing that and uh but he's not wrong that he was also coerced by you know general whatever his name is yeah, thunder, he, he, thunder he jaw abomination thunder, which he couldn't yeah. control himself Exactly. It's not so, Thunder Jaw, by the way, people, just in case you try to oops me. It's I think it's Thunder Ross General. Thunder Ross, Jaw is Horizon Thunder from Jaw. West. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I can't think of his name. Thunderstruck. He's just Thunder. Thunder Ross. It's Macy DC. Thunderstruck. Yep. Thunderstruck. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I think the the choice to make her She Hulk within the workplace, the whole setup of the workplace is so post snap. Like superheroes, weirdos, villains. All this stuff is normal now. So it's a part of life. And they're like, hey, we need a superhero division. And you're going to be doing it as She-Hulk. It totally makes sense. I love it. Uh, getting nothing against the actress that plays Jen Walters and her look and feel overall. I think she's a really nice lady. Um, but seeing She-Hulk do her thing, at, at attorney at law, and also beating up fools uh, in, in other parts of the show, love it. Um, I think that uh, as they set up this new workplace for her i think it's a it's a cool idea that almost for me i personally would not mind this being a dozen or more season like episode show like season i guess because every week you can do a different uh a different hero different villain a different you know case that you're working on which we kind of get a little bit of that feel later on um but i like the setup i i enjoy all of it. And seeing Blonsky again is great. He's like an old friend, even if he's in a movie where people have kind of poo-pooed it because it's a different actor that played Incredible Hulk, which they referred to in the first episode, which was great. Um, yeah. No, actually, no. It was this episode they referred to it, right? Where he talks to Bruce and Bruce is like, uh, yeah, I was a different person then. I don't, I, I don't hold it against him. Like it was a perfect little interjection of yeah. guess what? Well, he was like, uh, I was a different acknowledge person. Acknowledge it. Literally. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was hilarious. I loved it. Yeah. Um, also, in th- at this point, there is an Easter egg showing that Wolverine is in this world. They talk about a bar fight. They don't talk about a bar fight. When she's looking through the job search area on the internet, there's a little article that talks about a man with metal claws in a bar fight uh, referencing Wolverine. I like mm-hmm. that. That was cool. Um, yeah, just the overall feel. It really is Ally McBeal meets the Incredible Hulk. Like it just it has that that quirky feel to it. So yeah, uh, so far so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to episode three. Well, hold, hold on, and, and, and episode two. She's talking to her boss. She's like, "I got this in the bag. Like I've got this." And oh yes, 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 he's, yes. His boss, her boss, was like, "May want to turn on the news," and she sees that Abomination has escaped prison and it's now in an underground right. fighting ring and she's yeah. like well that sucks like the way this show just like she's she's in the scene and then just looks at the camera you know at us and she's like well that sucks you know like yeah. I, I love that fourth fourth wall kind of thing so uh, i that like kinda it leads to a point but yes that leads to the next episode that leads that connects to shang chi uh mm-hmm. which is was my question when i saw blonsky when i saw abomination i was like wasn't he in Shang Chi? Like, what's going on? So they connect it right at the end, which was yep. smart. Uh, the fourth wall stuff to this point, I've enjoyed. I feel like they've kept it to a minimum. I can't say that for later episodes, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. 
Okay. Uh, speaking of getting to that, uh, Mark has arrived. Oh, hey. Here he is, just folks. in time. That's right. He is uh, the dude with Kevin Conroy voiced Dark Knight in his heart. Mark Hamill's Joker's laugh on his brain in some kind of soup that rhymes with Punxsutawney and his old stomacho. Mark Boucher, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank this you. This just in. Glad you're here. Uh, we just did a quick overview of episode two. Any thoughts on episode two of She-Hulk? Uh, I thought it was good. Um, trying to trying to recall put it, it on the box. That, yep, put it on the, yeah. on the box. It was it was great. It was fantastic. That's fun. You can interject thoughts on episode two as we get into episode three. There we go. Mm-hmm. Sound good. Sounds so, good. So, episode three called "The People versus Emil Blonsky." Jen and Emil have a chat. Wong enters the picture and agrees to vouch for Emil being forced to fight. At the parole hearing, Blonsky demonstrates his ability to turn into abomination without going nutso, shows off his harem of pen pals, and even shows his softer side after having helped a security guard make peace with his failed marriage and ultimately gets released as long as he never turns into abomination again. Meanwhile, She-Hulk, She-Hulk, no, She-Hulk ends up testifying in a case her co-worker Pug has been working on where a new Asgardian elf is shape-shifting her way to riches by dating Jen's former co-worker, Scumbag, and pretending to be Megan the Stallion. At the end, She-Hulk is attacked by four dudes with new Asgardian construction gear after she helps her co-worker Pug win the case, and apparently they're trying to get her blood. Later, she also twerks with Megan the Stallion. <laughs> Episode 3 summary. Good times. Always. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that so, was the uh, thing. <laughs> what did you guys think of episode three? Mark, we'll start with you since you uh, you're here now and we're happy. Yeah. So that that dude is like a special kind of scumbag. The oh the, man, wasn't he? And the special kind of idiot too. Yeah. Um, but no, overall, I thought this was a was uh, was a super fun episode. Um, uh, interesting. You pointed out that was that was the other thing. Um, at the end of episode two um where she fights those guys with the with the the weapons that that's actually those are actually characters from the mc from the marvel universe they're called the wrecking crew oh yes 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 um and i remember and that so now. uh yeah it was it was funny to watch them basically get get owned oh apparently. yeah um but well, it's funny how like at first you're like ooh, they have like special gear and she's like is that asgardian construction gear and it's like they can't do anything with it it's yeah. hilarious they have no idea what they're doing with it but nope. um but it's it's interesting to to see that that ultimately I, I don't think that she's here for nothing in terms of specifically uh you know representing emil Blonsky and all of that and she's being attacked by this wrecking crew and all that kind of stuff. I think there's, I think there's something possibly going on here. Um, mm. some, I don't know. I don't know if they'll necessarily be like a big bad or anything, but um, I, I think there's, there's a bigger thing at play here. Right. I mean, yeah, to this point, that's the only reference to a quote unquote big bad after they fail to, you know, poke her with the needle to get her blood. Yeah. They, they, I can't remember if they make a call or write a text or like, Hey, tell the big boss we couldn't find, we couldn't get it or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They did make, make, made men- make mention of some kind of, uh, some kind of boss that they have. Do you think it's Kingpin? hundred Re- percent. Recovering Maybe. from getting the bajangles beat out of him during Hawkeye. And he needs some, uh, the Hulk blood to get bigger. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing ideas out. It could be, is it Valkyrie? No. What? Valkyrie's Who's, from the like King universe. Valkyrie. No. Who am I thinking of? The guy with the wings. What am I thinking of? Michael Angel. Keaton. Oh, Vulture. 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 Valkyrie. That does start got, with V. That's I got close Apex enough. Legends on my brain. <laughs> uh, so, but I don't know about that. when they said like the Wrecking Crew construction and they had like the the alien stuff, I'm like. That, was that from was that from Michael Keaton's Vulture? Like I know that the Wrecking Crew, I know that they are, but I know that Marvel does things a little bit differently. You know, they 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 like to twist some things because the way that the Wrecking Crew just got wrecked, uh, oh, yeah. I'm like, mm, maybe maybe they're not a the big bad. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. seem like it at all. Uh, but but I think I think uh, with this being a law show 
and they're being kingpin and daredevil's probably going to be this at some point um could this be could this be like a there's not really a big bad because we haven't really seen anything like that there's no really right. alluding to it at all right. uh, could it be a like a combination of of baddies or is it going to be a really lead into the daredevil show it's possible yeah mm -hmm. it's possible it is possible but hey we get to see wong in this episode yeah that's right w wongers wongers oh. Oh Wong! Oh, I'm sorry. That's not that's, that's yeah. That's episode four. four. Yeah, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves, buddy. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so yeah. this is gonna introduce us to the idea that I think Wong is acting really off, and this is episodes three and four. This is not the Wong. I've I've I feel like as we go from his original appearance in Doctor Strange, the that movie, Doctor Strange, and whatever Multiverse it's called, Multiverse of Madness. No, no, no. The original one. The first That's one? Oh, Dr. Doctor Strange. Strange. This is called Doctor Strange, right? Period. Yeah. Well, they introduce him and he's like a serious librarian. I I feel like at some point there's been, I don't know. He's just, he's acting. I think he's acting weird. Like He's, he's acting, acting goofier and goofier too, every time we see him. Almost too goofy -er and goofier. And so, uh, what do you guys think of that? I mean, I th I think it's fine. I think I think other than the first, you know, He's a, it's a, I mean, it's just different. You know, it's like, he's like evolving. You're, it's like peeling an onion kind of thing. Like there's, I think he's always been like that. He's just more animated than that now, especially with She-Hulk being more of a comedy, a sitcom kind of thing. Yep. Um, right. I think that has a lot to play, a lot to do with it. Yeah. I, I don't know that there's necessarily something more nefarious going on with, with Wong. I could be wrong, but um yeah, I think it's just it's mainly to serve to serve the show being a comedy. Um, they can take a character like Wong and look into a little more of his backstory and things like that. And what what does he do when he's not the Sorcerer Supreme or when he's not you know executing his duties or anything like that? Well, mm -hmm. he apparently a lot of things, which we'll talk about in in episode four. But, Correct. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> but that includes. Pulling uh, Abomination into a, a cage fighting match, which apparently was in his training to become Sorcerer, Sorcerer Supreme. That's that's what he said. Yeah, which I don't remember it. I don't remember how. I wanted to go back and watch Shang Chi just to find out. Okay, wait, what did they say? And did they say like give any credence to that when it happens in the movie? And I don't. I don't remember. I don't think they do. Once. I don't think they mention anything specifically. They're, that's just something they're they're able to give a little bit more detail yeah. about or retcon if you will. Yeah. Or maybe it's him just proving himself. Like you said, just yeah. kind of showing, Hey, I'm the sorcerer Supreme. So I'm just going to throw out there and I'm not the one that came up with this idea, but I very much believe it, especially after episode four, that he's a scroll and uh, he's not the real Wong. I it's think possible. there's something, there's something else going on. It just seems, I understand the style of the show and the way this, but even in, He's even, I think he, he's, he even acts a little weird, I think in multiverse of bandits, but I wouldn't go as far to say he's a scroll in that, but this one, he's a little too lackadaisical, a little too off. He says he wants to protect the earth and the universe and everything else, but it doesn't, I don't buy it. So I, my only question about that is, and, and I'd have to look more into, you know, the shape-shifting abilities of scrolls. Uh, are they able to wield magic the way that. Yeah. I, that's, does? that's another thing. That's what that's, that was my hang up is him being the, like automatically with you know flick of a finger being able to open portals and things like that and so right. I, I i don't think it, that he's a scroll i yeah, think that's, that's, just that's like, the fishy thing to me yeah, yeah. I, I having uh having those scrolls in this in this universe it's it's always a question if they're the real person or if they're a scroll or whatever, and you can, right. You can be a lot of conjecture. You can ponder yeah. and interpret the way you want, but I really don't think he's a scroll. I don't think that. I think that's just Wong. Wongers. Yeah. Oh, Wongers. All right. Well, yeah. if he's, if he is a scroll, then I think it gives credence to what he's doing. If he's not, then I'm not a big fan of what they're doing with this character personally, but it, uh, it is what it is. It is a fun show. I'll give him that. And the fun continues into episode four. Uh, episode four is titled, Is This Not Real Magic? Uh, it brings back 
Sorcerer Supreme Wongers, who is not acting very supreme as all, at all, as he wants to ask an ex-student, now sideshow magician Donnie Blaze, to cease and desist in the use of the dark arts with his borrowed sling ring. Through the testimony of an airheaded Paris Hilton impersonator called Madison with a Y, and his failure to stop the arrival of a horde of fast-growing bat demons when his magic tricks go awry, Wong works with She-Hulk to stop them, and they win the case. Oh, and also, Jin tries dating. Fails, finds success with She-Hulk, but then discovers that even the good ones are not interested in her normal self. Episode four. Boom. So. So. so uh, yeah, go ahead, um, Marcus. So, yeah, uh, I think the I think the whole Madison character was hilarious, you know, with a Y, but not in the place you think. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so, it was so funny. <laughs> And and now you know where where magicians like if they they would just randomly drop off their if they actually would make their people disappear. Well, in this case, he actually is, but um, she apparently makes the de- a deal with some sort of demon <laughs> uh, of some sorts, which is hilarious. Yeah, she she drops into Wong's place with like a heart in her hand. Like, yeah. Whoa, where'd you get that? And then yep. it's revealed later that she <laughs> makes a deal with the devil. Yep, uh, and I can hear the Infinity Bros now, Mephisto. Um, oh. But uh, is he, re- that's just, is he just referred to as a goat? <laughs> uh, she said something about talking to a talking goat. Yeah, a talking also. goat demon of some kind. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, this is this is hilarious. Um, it's also funny that um, this guy Donnie Blaze, which that made me so mad because. Uh huh. Um, because there, it was a big old fake out. A lot of the previews, um, they had signs for what looked like a guy named Johnny Blaze, which is the the real name of uh, the old uh, uh, Ghost, Rider. Ghost Rider. Yeah. And uh, turns out it was Donny Blaze, which is annoying. But well, which oh, I well. was, I don't, I was like, what the first scene where he's doing ma- magic? I'm like, who is this guy? Like, am I supposed <laughs> to know who this guy is? Like. It was, I was so confused about the intro to this to this episode. Yeah, and then you find out he's got he's got one of them. He's just a nobody. Nice sling sling rings. Well, I want sling rings. Well, he he is, but he isn't. He actually started training in the mystic arts, but he only trained for a week. Right. Yeah. And, and then, then they kicked him out. out. Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, I stand by my my, my statement. Oh, that's no, fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was I mean it was a it was a funny setup, an interesting way for Wong to come back into the picture. Of course, like his whole idea of doing a cease and desist was quickly shot down. She's like, "Did you have this in writing? Did you do this? Did you do that?" And he's like, "No." And yet, even after all those, I thought it was kind of goofy that they just were like, "Here's your papers we're serving you even though we have nothing." But I guess they had uh, old Madison's testimony who she was a terrible terrible testifier but I, I don't know how that would be admissible in any sort of court knowing <laughs> no. that she's like under the influence of she's yeah drinking she's slurring her words <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be honest idea. and say that for me that's this is probably my least favorite side character that they gave too much tv time to was madison with a y yeah. uh, i think I, I she mean, played like, it a little too hard and a little too like oh my gosh look at me i've got was, a drink i was, I was annoyed not, I at wasn't first. entertained by her. I was all. annoyed at first, but she grew on me, especially yeah. at the end. I'm like, oh my, she kept saying Wongers. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is now I, I, I retract my original thoughts. She's an amazing character. I thought she yeah. was, I mean, having her more than one episode might've been like a little too much. She yeah. did get a lot of screen time, but I think it was just par for the course for the show and keeping it, keeping it light, keeping it funny. Cause I mean, like, what are we talking about? We're we're <laughs> we are uh, doing a court case about a guy doing some magic, some mystic arts magic, on a, on a stage. Like the 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 overarching you know kind of storyline for this episode, it's really nothing. I mean, uh, for for that, and that's that's what I love about this. It's very lighthearted. It's uh, they there's a lot of a lot of fourth wall talk in this. Um, yeah, which I which a whole I. Lot which I love. I, I, I absolutely love it. It makes, it's like, it's, it's my kind of comedy. It feels yeah. like a family guy kind of thing where they kind of do like, you know, like those little, cutaway gag, those clips. Yeah. It kind of feels like that a little bit. And I really appreciate that. Um, 
yeah i mean i i, I enjoyed i of, of of all the episodes so far i think this one is my second favorite besides the first episode Speaking of speaking of uh, the whole breaking the fourth wall thing, I know you guys talked about episode two, but real quick, I just wanted to mention that whole thing when um, she's talking with Bruce. Yeah, about, we about, did mention that, but okay. yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> I love that, like a, a, a whole different person back then, literally. <laughs> yeah. Huh. yeah, but I figured now, we probably did. But sorry, going, continue. with this with this episode, I'm going to be honest. This is my least favorite episode so far. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I think for me, it's kind of like how you guys felt. I I think I understand more how you guys felt during love and thunder, even though I didn't feel like it because I felt like the serious and the silly balanced. Yeah. I think for this, there's like almost literally no seriousness. And I feel like Marvel to this point overall has done a good job of balancing silly and serious. And I think this is maybe the most imbalanced and I haven't, I found myself just sitting there watching and not laughing when I think I should have been laughing and not really connecting with, I think the only character that I really care for other than of course, Jen, I think Jen and she Hulk and, and all the things that she does and says, even with the fourth wall stuff, even though I feel like it's getting thrown on a little thick, I I would, I would like just once an episode, but it's fine. It's not that big a deal. Uh, It's the side characters that I'm like, I'm not really jiving with like even her paralegal helper who just pretty much is her Googler. Like that's all she does for her is Google yeah. like, and then say some random things. And then uh, the dad, I love the dad, the dad, like in this episode, at the beginning of this one, he comes into the house with the shovel and all this <laughs> stuff. And he's like, she's like, what are we going to do with that shovel? Dad, we got to dig something up. Like just I'm a Hulk dad. <laughs> yeah. Like you his whole, shovel. his whole, like, I'm going to help you. Like was just, it was like it's such a dad move. And did you uh, ever watch really uh, great. Did you ever watch perfect strangers? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's he's a yep. uh, he's the he's guy from the, Perfect Strangers. The, one of the two. The, he's the not quote Valky. unquote normal one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's the he's the was he a lawyer? The guy that uh, I can't remember if he was a lawyer on that. I can't show. remember either. Uh, it's been so long since I've watched that one. All that I can show. remember yeah. is I think it was also the other guy when that was out. Yeah. Man, if if is it was it Balky? Is Balky, that was it? Balky Bartokamus. Yeah, I would love it if he showed up as like a friend of the dad. Like the dad's like <laughs> hanging out. With, that would be so amazing and like just like a really good way to connect well, with. I us don't old think folks you would think that would be that. amazing. I mean, you th- you're you're uh, what you're you're expecting this show to be serious, and I think that no, but but bulky is... bulky fits that. Bulky is bulky. But but the way well, your expectation for this for the show or for this episode, you're expecting it to be serious, which is no, I'm not expecting what it to be to balanced. I'm not expecting it to be serious at all. No, I I recognize that it's supposed to be silly, breaking the fourth wall, but I feel like it's 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 almost superficial silliness. Like it doesn't it doesn't hit the the emotional stuff that Marvel usually does. I don't feel like it's been almost in the way that uh, you know, I don't know, like in in maybe in Moon Knight where some people thought it was too serious, but even then I thought they balanced it well with the way that uh I can't even remember now, but how goofy and quirky uh one of his personalities is uh latest gators like even then like it was a really serious situation but it was very quirky like i just don't i, d- I just i'm not catching the yeah the balance in that all that i feel like marvel's been good at in its and, history and i and i think it's because they've they've set out with the show to do more of the comedy and yeah sort of push it in that direction and that's fine I, they I can choose think... to do that but i don't have to like it yeah i'm just i'm just saying that's that's the the balance yeah. balance thing is kind of out the Don't window. Tell I me think. what I can and cannot like. <laughs> well, it's just like um, with Patrick not liking the uh, origin story of Moon Knight at the very end. Yeah, they did that on purpose. So yeah. they did on yeah. purpose. It just doesn't. Hate. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. So they're doing this series, the I, silly stuff with the fake Paris Hilton because they hate I, me. So and I appreciate. We all I, have those like, moments. One of my favorite series of all time is Seinfeld. Number two, next to Friends, and and Seinfeld is a show about nothing, where basically no episode will relate to the previous episode. Very little will they talk about a previous episode. It's just a thing. It's just an episode, 22 yeah. minute episode that happens. And this episode kind of felt like that where I'm like, well, we're just doing, you know, this is a procedural kind of, you know, episode where right. we're just going to talk about nothing. We're going to have some good laughs and then we're going to have a, you know, a, a you know, a, a spoiler cut scene at the end. And then that's it. You know, like that's, that's all I ex- that's all I expect from the show after watching the first three episodes I was like okay we're this is I'm not expecting anything huge I'm expecting to go in 
sit down, have some popcorn and, and have fun. And this, this show is fitting that bill for me. Um, it's right up my alley. I think the whole, the whole dating thing in this episode where she's like, I'm going to date on matcher.com and be Jen Walters. And she's getting no, nothing. And then she's, she's like, she gets an alert. She looks at it, says no matches, no, no matches yet. Or something like that. She's like, why is that an alert? You know, like <laughs> I'm like yeah. laughing hysterically. And then she's like, whatever. So she does she Hulk and she goes on dates as she Hulk. And I think that's like, it's just very interesting to see a more of a personal side of a hero like she Hulk or any of the other ones um, of what they would do in their real life. If they right. were to, you know, have a regular job and not become a hero, not be part of the Avengers and things like that. I think it's very interesting. They're doing it a little bit differently and that's how it's fresh. And I, that's, I, that's what I love about the show. It's not the same old, same old. They're not trying to be like all Quentin Tarantino about it. It's, it's just a comedy. It's just a sitcom. And it's going to be part of the bigger Marvel universe at some point. To what degree? We're not sure yet. We haven't seen that. Um, that's one of the things I don't really care for is what's going to happen in the future with this and doing all the conjecture. Like, I think that's, we never know. Marvel always throws us a curveball, always. So we're never going to be able to figure that out. So I just like to live in the moment. And this show really allows me to just live in the moment. I really, yeah. that's what, that's what I love about the show. Yeah. And I, we have, and we have She-Hulk in almost every scene. It's yeah. a little bit of Jen Walters. Cause after she had that one night stand, she's Jen Walters. And the guy's like, eh, um, Bye. you know and so she's like oh dang it <laughs> and then back to she hulk yeah yeah i i I'm, I'm enjoying the show so far um we've got five more episodes after this yes um but uh honestly like with oh, overall with how much i'm in, i'm enjoying this show and and then we've talked about this on previous marvel episodes where we talked about this um Honestly, I feel like I would be okay if if Marvel went back to just movies. Honestly, I would be okay with that. Um, just because like the 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 stuff that they're putting out is good, but it's not like whoa good. Like right. Like, I feel like they're they're kind of stretching themselves a little thin. Yeah. Um and and so um but you know they're going to keep doing it uh, at least for the next year or more year or two probably um but I, honestly like I, i'm interested to see where things are going but at the same time like i would be okay if they if they went straight back to just movies but, yeah i can get that i mean they they have saturated and i mean we knew disney was going to do this eventually both with this and star wars where they're just yeah. they're coming out with lots of stuff they're saturating the market with it trying to hit every genre like you know like you guys have noted this is not this is this is pure comedy law silliness and that's what they're going for yeah. which you know that's they have all the freedom to do that and i can see i can see both sides and both points and then what what it really comes down to is if you enjoy it watch it if you don't then it, if you're the Wikipedia, well, Wikipedia synopsis yeah re, exactly and at this point i don't know that i I can do that even if I don't. I mean, I already, this still is better than uh, I would say more than I, I can I mean, I don't want to say yet because I, I have, I watched the complete arc of Ms. Marvel. Uh, I would say so far, this is better than Ms. Marvel for me, but, um, and I've sat through and watched that. I, I think I'm too invested in Marvel to just be like, oh, I don't like this. So I'm going to do something else. I still feel like overall the big picture I enjoy that aspect. I enjoy, you know, the different things that it's doing. And I enjoy the personal things like her, her trying to date and trying to figure out her life and figure out herself. Um, and, and so I, I totally get that. And I, and I also get the idea of, you know, less is more when yeah. it comes to let's just stick to movies. So, yep. It is what it is. Indeed. Indeed. Mm. Give mm-hmm. me, give me it all. I'm, I'm on I the want planet. it all. If there's a TV show. Nom, nom, give it nom, to me. Nom, 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 nom. All if right. There's a movie. Give it to me. So, speaking of giving it to us, give us your review scores uh, as of episode four. So, this was, of course, a rating in progress. This is not the final rating. Um, Mark, why don't you start? Uh, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give She Hulk, I would say, 
eight out of ten uh eight out of ten swipes left okay or oh. right whichever way it is <laughs> i don't know do either. any of us know <laughs> <laughs> i've never used any i haven't used nope yeah. me neither well, even when she was like swiping crap. left and right i'm like wait which which one is the good and which yeah, is she was the bad like, going crazy with her swipes like I don't know which like, one she yeah. was liking. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell either. Uh, Patrick, how about you? Um, yeah, I love the show. I look forward to this show every Thursday. Um, more than I've seen. Uh, it's like a Mandalorian kind of like waiting for the next episode uh, for me. And I, I absolutely love this show. I think it's funny. The fourth wall uh, comedy is exactly up, up my alley as well. Uh, the characters, you know, like, like you said, the, the side characters aren't the best. Um, but Jen Walters, you know, uh, Tatiana Maslani, I think her name is, That's she it? is fantastic. Good like job. They, this was a great casting for her. Like it was, uh, the, the way they've written it, the way they've shot it, directed it. It's perfect for her. Um, Really interested to see how this, if if this goes anywhere. If it doesn't, if it's just a Seinfeld sitcom, then I'm all good with it. Uh, I give it a nine point three fourth walls out of ten. Nice, <laughs> nice. very nice. Uh, as for me, I really enjoy uh, the character of Jen Walters, She Hulk. That whole drama around her trying to figure out her life, career wise, personal wise. Um, I enjoy the connections to the Marvel universe at large, um, and, and overall the, the different ways in which they have connected with the incredible Hulk, the old movie with Bruce Banner, uh, and, and what they're building towards, I believe is good, but the humor and the side characters are not jiving with me. Uh, their overall feel of the show is not, it's, it just feels imbalanced. So I'm going to give it a slightly critical 7 out of 10. Uh, as Guardian construction worker helmets. There you go. All right. Out yep. of 10. Out of 10. So, all right. Well, that is our next hulked out discussion of the latest in the MCU's shows and episodes. If you'd like to join in the convo about it, Let's do some quick housekeeping where we offer towels, fluffed pillows with Andy's candies and tip you off to how you can connect with the GMGU. On Twitter, Discord, Facebook, and Instagram, you can share what's new with you. If you'd like to connect with us visually instead, YouTube and Twitch, where Mark's playing old Battle Royales and Legend of Zeldas. I'm playing Roguelikes and Randomness, and Chris the Rock is playing one of our plethora of GMG VGBC games pretty much every day except Sundays. And then finally, on Patreon and our merch page, you can support us and gear up. So click that one link to rule them all, either in the show notes or you can type it out real quick, linktree.com slash the GMG pod. Of course, if you can't toss your attention or a coin to your podcasters, but are still the giving type, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, and Spotify, uh, one of which may be on our naughty list right now because it's trying to ruin our lives and not post our episodes, but we won't name names. Apple, we're watching you. Uh, it does help us to reach new joiners through stars, exclamation marks, and your feedback. So let your voice be heard literally if you like at 929 GMG guys. All righty then, Pat, Mark, and you, our beloved friends, family, and joiners. Go get your good morning this week and may God bless and guide your lives as you live, as you work, and as you stream. <laughs>